All right, so this is my 100 mile review of my Santa Cruz Bronson CC X01 build. I'll go up and down the bike and talk about the stuff that I like, the stuff that I don't like, and if I don't mention it, then it didn't really uh, jump out to me. So I've got to start with the RockShox suspension. I've got the Pike up front and the Monarch out back, and I, I'm running this pretty darn soft, and I love it. I just really like a soft suspension plush. Flirting with uh, bottoming out, but just always using as much suspension as possible. I've got 155 PSI in the shock, and that's about my weight with my gear on, and uh, that's, that's worked out pretty well so far. The wheels on this bike are Race Face Arc 27, previously Easton Arc 27, and I already have a pretty bad dent in my rear tire, in my rear wheel, so I've gotten a new rim on order. You can see it right here and guess what they don't make race face uh, tw arc 27 rims for the public yet they only make them for brand new bikes so I'm gonna have to order an Easton arc 27 and have mis mismatched wheels that's all right the price I pay for running too low of air pressure and getting the dent in the back wheel the Eagle 1x12 drivetrain has been pretty damn good. I was riding at around 11,000 feet in Colorado a few days ago and uh, I, needed, I needed that 12th gear. I think for most applications you don't need the 12th gear. You just need to ride more and get stronger. But uh, you're going to find yourself in certain situations where you'd rather ride than just walk the bike uphill. The rear derailleur cage definitely sits pretty low to the ground as you can see. I haven't had any problems with that yet. but. Even in the first hundred miles, I've already damaged this, scraped it up, all kinds of scrapes and dings on the bike already, but I am not gonna hold back. I'm gonna ride how I wanna ride, and this bike is made to be ridden hard, so that's my philosophy. First upgrade on any bike should be these little crank booties right here, race face crank booties, whatever brand you want, but uh, they definitely protect the cranks. My cranks always get damaged and I'm definitely getting some pedal strikes on this bike. You can see how low we are right here with the suspension very soft and plush. You're gonna be very close to the ground. My feet touching the ground sometimes and it's just the price you pay for this aggressive geometry and the way this bike is set up. I really love the way it rides, so not a huge fan of the pedal strikes, but I'm gonna have to deal with it. My little mucky nuts fender here has worked pretty well to keep the mud off of my GoPro lens. These Maxxis Minion tires have been really nice. I do not mind sacrificing speed for a grip. I would rather have the knobbiest, gnarliest tires possible so I can have fun instead of worrying about it slowing me down. My butt was definitely starting to hurt after putting 100 miles on this bike in a week and uh, just not sure if that's the, my fault or the saddle's fault. So we'll see as time goes on how the saddle holds up and if I want to switch it out for something that uh, doesn't break my ass in half. The RockShox Reverb dropper post has performed really, really well. Very smooth up and down. The only thing I really, really dislike about this entire bike is the remote. This thing just digs into my thumb all the time. I have to kind of try to keep my hand off to the side, but see I have some pretty big hands and I've I'm pretty much working on a permanent uh, scar there on my thumb from this damn thing. I've seen that there's a guy in Europe that makes a replacement uh, dropper post remote that's you know more of the, the lever type, like this right here. But you've got this RockShox fluid in here, it's like, uh, I, I may be swapping out the dropper post. Big wide handlebars and short stem have done me pretty well. Digging those so far, haven't had any tree uh, strikes yet with the big old bars. I'm sure it'll happen though. The rear brake cable opposite the drive side has had a hell of a rub from the very start. And I, I used this, uh, this tape that came with the bike and I don't know if, it came, if a competitive cyclist sent this over or if it comes with every Santa Cruz bike but I use this tape to try to prevent some of the rub from happening. And uh, I'm gonna get in here and clean this up because this was just kind of a, a quick fix and, and put another piece of tape on this thing. Brakes have performed very, very nicely like you hope brand new brakes should. You can modulate these brakes very nicely so you can always kind of be 
feathering them, you know, not it's not just on and off. You can kind of put a little pressure, put a little more pressure, take a little pressure off to give you that exact feel that you want when you're barreling down the trail. So I've ridden many, many bikes over the past couple of months, and this still remains one of the most fun bikes I've ridden. The intense tracer, the intense spider were great, the high tower was great, and now I just I rode the S-Works Enduro 29er and that was a great bike too. Really my goal is to get you guys to ride these bikes yourself and to feel them out for yourself. I know that's not always possible, but it, there is just this huge paralysis of analysis that goes on with any kind of high-tech machinery. You guys get so wrapped up in all the details and all the head angle and this and slacker and what about the wheel size. Just get out and ride. Please, for the love of God, just get out and ride. I let the bike companies make the bike and then I go ride the bike and have as much fun as I possibly can. I just don't want to get into that same old trap of talking about the marketing uh, bullet points and saying, oh, it climbs like a goat, it descends like a demon. Every single bike does that. <laughs> so find the bike that you like, get on it and ride. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys on the trail.